Fast and Furious is amazing. Some of you might be saying, uh, yeah, we already knew that. And some of you might think that I'm joking. I'm not joking, okay? And yes, I'm late to the party, but I have a lot to say about these Buck Wild movies. But first, let me paint a picture for you, okay? I was a child when the first Fast and Furious movie came out in 2001. I was a kid who liked Star Wars and anime. And in my whole life, if there's anything I could give less of a shit about, it's sports and cars. So now you're telling me there's a movie about sports cars? No, I'm okay, thank you. That's a movie for the kids who play FIFA, all right? It's for the kids who like to do this. I ignored these movies on the basis that I thought they were dumb and that only dumb people watch them. But in the past few years, my friends and peers have told me, hey Marcus, you know, you might like those Fast and Furious movies. And I ignored them until the day that I saw this trailer. And in that moment, something changed in me. I realized that these movies might actually be kind of fun. I like over-the-top action. I like Jason Statham. I like cheesy tongue-in-cheek dialogue. Drop it, I don't wanna talk about it. Drop it, hell? I wanna hear about this, homie. I said forget about it, cuz. So I made it my mission to watch every goddamn Fast and Furious movie before Hobbs and Shaw came out. Thing about street fights? The street always wins. But what's the appeal of these movies? Well, it's actually quite simple. They are very, very stupid. These movies have kind of a weird transformation. The first movie is very much for people who like cars. It's a straightforward story about an undercover cop who learns about respect and honor in the street racing world. He befriends criminals and forms a bond with them. And it's got a lot of raw masculine energy, and that's not really for everybody, myself included. But all things considered, it's a pretty normal movie. The climax is just these guys trying to get one other guy to jump onto their car. The most impressive stunt is when they drive under a truck. Ooh. And then the second movie is basically just the first movie again, except with black people. And then the third movie is also just the first two movies again, except this time it's in Tokyo. Except it doesn't have Japanese people in it. It's got like white people and Bow Wow's in it. You know what DK stands for? <laughs> now when I was marathoning these movies and I got to Tokyo Drift, I was thinking to myself, this is the Fast and Furious series? I am not impressed. But I think the studio also knew this, because Fast 4 is a little different. Now people say that 5 is where the movies really change and get good, and yes, I agree, but 4 changes things up a bit too. You see, the first three movies have a very specific vibe, okay? It's chill dudes racing in cool cars. These are very laid back movies. But then, Fast and Furious 4 starts with this scene. And it was at this point where I realized that I was still alive. The characters are also now apparently superhuman. Before, the character of Dominic Toretto was just a chill guy who was really good at racing. But now, he has superpowers. He can hold up an entire engine block with one arm. He gets shot and ignores it. Bullets are just an inconvenience for him. And on top of that, him and the other characters are now so good at driving that they can do what I like to call car foo. Now while this stuff is laid down in the fourth movie, it's still mostly a racing movie, but when Fast Five comes out, things make a drastic change. I mean, look at that fucking title. It's disgusting. I love it. This is where the studio decided, okay, listen, people don't care about cars, all right? We actually have to make an interesting movie now. And I gotta say, this movie's not bad, it's actually pretty good. It has insane action scenes, the characters are corny a lot of the time, but they're charming and have high charisma, so you don't really mind. And all these characters are people that you've already seen before. This movie feels like they kind of expected it to be the last one. It has a sense of finality to it. The series could end here and it would have been perfectly fine. But it didn't, and I'm glad it didn't, because this movie introduces Dwayne The Rock Johnson's character, Hobbs who single-handedly saves the series. 
You just earned yourself a dance with the devil, boy. This man is so delightfully outrageous. He has some of the weirdest fucking lines I've ever heard. Give me the damn veggies. He just kind of does whatever the fuck he wants, and his whole character basically exists just to entertain you. I've been waiting a long time for this. <laughs> Keep waiting, bitch. <laughs> At this point, it really feels like the people who are making these movies know exactly what they're doing. They decided, you know what? Fuck it. We're just gonna have fun. In Fast Five, the characters spend half of this movie planning this insanely intricate heist, where they have to use all their skills and technology to outrun these security cameras, sneak into a police station, and hack into an electronic safe so they can steal $100 million. And you know what they do by the end of the movie? They decide, fuck that plan. They crash into the fucking wall of the police station, grab the safe, and just drag it away with their Dodge Chargers. Are they actually Dodge Chargers? I don't know, because I don't care about cars. And for once, I don't need to. Oh, and then on top of that, they decide to use car foo and use the safe as a weapon to kill the villains. <laughs> Now this is where most people realize that these movies are not meant to be taken seriously. And honestly, looking back on it, this is one of the more normal movies in the series. In the next movie, we have shit like this. And this. And this. These movies are anime. The Fast series is just a stupid, shounen anime where the main characters are just naturally stronger than everybody else. And the only reason they're this strong is because they're the main characters. By the time we get to the eighth movie, all of the characters kind of just know how to fight, and they're really good at it. In the second movie, Ludacris was just a normal fucking guy. Literally a normal person. But now he's a super smart tech genius who knows karate? Michelle Rodriguez started the first movie by being the tough girl who likes to drive and drink a Corona with the boys. Then she goes undercover to stop a crime lord. She gets blown up, gets amnesia, and becomes a villain before rejoining the team. And now, for some reason, she is an expert hand-to-hand -hand combatant who can fight trained soldiers and Ronda Rousey at the same time and win. Hell, in these movies, Hobbs is strong enough to flex off his cast, and then in another movie, he holds a helicopter at bay with one arm. This is a movie where the main characters are immune to car accidents. They can defeat helicopters, trains, and submarines with just the power of their car foo. The characters are constantly put into ridiculous situations and it's just exciting to see how the fuck they're gonna make it out alive. This is a series where Jason Statham wields two makeshift swords and fights Vin Diesel who is wielding two wrenches. Are you seriously telling me that you're too good for this shit? These movies have one singular rule, be as fun and entertaining as possible. And logic just happens to be thrown out the window. Logic is just a screenwriting limitation for these movies. This is a series that is constantly trying to one-up itself, and honestly, I respect that. I watched these movies for a whole week, and at times, I was very exhausted. But by the end, when they do their send-off to Paul Walker, I actually felt pretty emotional. I watched these characters for a whole week, and then I had to say goodbye to one of them. And even after that, I was still enjoying the movies. You just can't watch these movies like you watch other movies, okay? You gotta watch them like you watch anime. You gotta slog through that first arc where things really haven't picked up yet, but you will be rewarded for your patience. Now, I've been tweeting about these movies while I was watching them, and a few of you have said, hey, these seem kind of fun, but I don't really know anything about them. And I understand how you feel. You're scared. You don't feel like you're supposed to like movies like this. So, say you want to watch these movies now. Maybe I've convinced you to give them a try, or maybe you're already a fan and you just want to have a marathon too. Well, you're in luck, because I have devised the perfect Fast and Furious drinking game. Trust me, you're gonna need alcohol to get through all of them. The number one rule is that you can drink whatever you want, as long as it's Corona. If you're under 21 or you don't drink, your only other option is Snapple. Now, if you see any of the following things on this list, you have to take a drink, all right? Buckle up. 
Whenever somebody mentions family, whenever a licensed song plays, whenever Paul Walker does that dorky smile, whenever the main characters say grace, whenever there's a shot of Toretto's crucifix, whenever the bad guy has a scene where he beats up or kills a guy that works for him just to prove how bad he is, whenever anybody in any of the movies activates NOS, take two drinks if the camera goes inside the car to show it happening. Whenever Hobbs says something ridiculous, trust me, you'll know what I mean. You're gonna protect our little egg, move it out of the hen house, then we're gonna wait for that goddamn fox to arrive. Now this one's for the seventh movie only, but take a drink whenever you notice that there's a CGI Paul Walker in the scene. Whenever Dom does this, he, he does it a lot. Whenever you see someone drinking Corona. Whenever somebody survives a car crash that very much should have killed them. Whenever you see a shot comprised entirely of women's asses. Warning, this one may kill you. And that's it, guys. Enjoy the ride, and as always, salud mi familia. The Cosmonaut Variety Hour is not responsible for any deaths or injuries that may occur after partaking in this challenge.